Have you officially jumped off the bandwagon, Max Kellerman? No, not officially. <laughs> Maybe unofficially, I'm, I'm looking for the lifeboat. But look, I said you can also check tape. I could see them three and four, worst case scenario, two and five after seven games. Because when I looked at the schedule, first of all, whenever a team first comes together, especially when you take a pass protection like, like uh, Zeitler off the offensive line, mm. that stuff takes a minute to gel. Plus, they had a kind of rough schedule early. I apologize. So I thought, Did you just say a minute? Yeah. Not, so I not, thought, not, well, not, well, not, look, not, look, not eight weeks. I thought three and four okay. was more likely or four mm. and three, mm. but I could see two and five. Mm. But then a funny thing happens in their schedule. Mm. Now, they have to play well, obviously, but the Bron like, if, you're, if the Broncos and the Bills are the tough opponents on your schedule, mm. you've got a pretty good one. Then it's the Steelers, the Dolphins, the Steelers, the Bengals. The Cardinals, who, you know, are better than you figured they'd be, but are not world beaters. The Ravens is the tough draw. And then the Bengals again. It's a very easy schedule by NFL standards the rest of the way. And if you think that doesn't play a part in how a team performs, mm -hmm. look, as good as the Patriots are, no one comes close to them because other than the Bills, they haven't played anyone, including the Browns, who obviously don't have their act together yet. Mm -hmm. It plays an enormous part. Look, if you can win that division with nine games, which you might be able to with nine wins, they're going to have to reverse this kind of two and five, go five and two over their next seven. But I think we will be having a very different conversation in a, if and when that happens. They obviously cannot lose both games, Broncos and Bills. They must win at least one, if not both, to remain it like even to have me on the bandwagon at all. Let me tell you something, man. You know, I listen to you here and um you know, it's I love how you try to get so slick and change the narrative. I am not trying to sit up there and say that let's ignore your strength of schedule or lack thereof. We all understand that the latter part of their schedule is relatively weak compared to the uh, you know, the beginning of this season, beginning of the schedule. But I remember you talking about their talent. I remember you talking about how gifted they were and how it really didn't matter when I sat up here and said, excuse me, they might not win the AFC. I said, I don't even have them winning the AFC North. They might not even make a wild card spot. And I got serious questions about the fact that you got a second-year quarterback and a first-year coach. It was you that raved about their relationship. It was you that raved about Baker Mayfield. Do I have it right, Molly? Are you ready for this? He's a baller. Who that remind you of? I think that was you. Now, Guilty. here we are. Here we are. nerve. You talking about the Steelers. When are we, when are we going to? Listen, listen, listen. I know the Steelers have stunk up the joint. I conceded that weeks ago. I mean, when you opened the season, get shut up by 30. I got no defense for you. But they don't have their starting the, quarterback. I don't, no, no, excuse me. I said week one. Even when they did. Yeah. I said week one. They yeah. had been Roethlisberger that first yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Here's the deal. Freddie Kitchens is the wrong man for this job. Why don't we stop playing around? The man, listen, and, 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 and if Freddie Kitchens is watching, listen, I don't want to be, I don't want to dog him like everybody else is and act like, like then he has no potential. What I'm saying is you go from a positional coach to an offensive coordinator to the head coach inside of a year where you got people in the NFL have been waiting decades for this opportunity and this dude pulls it off in the year. Who, who do you have pictures on? Who do you know? How the hell did that happen? Okay? Yesterday what happens is 13 penalties. 13 penalties on the season. 70. You're going up against a team that got 46 on the year. You are averaging 10 penalties per game. False starts, offsides, timeouts being used because dudes are in the wrong position. And this includes Odell Beckham Jr. And you talking to me about their schedule? They, a legitimate argument can be made that the Cleveland Browns don't know how to play football. And I don't mean literally as a talent. I'm talking about as a team. A legitimate argument. Listen, you call games. You're doing a great job, by the way, doing that. Okay? Thank you. Thank okay? You. you play the game. You know the game. I ain't questioning your knowledge. I'll defer to you. I'm talking collectively as a unit, as a team. A legitimate argument can be made. They don't know how to play football. So you, you, when you talk to me about a schedule, I'm saying, wait a minute. Don't you first have to know how to play? Together as a team? Don't you have to know the rules? Don't you have to know how to avoid false starts and offsides and all of this and other? Don't you have to know encroachment? Don't you, that's right. Don't you have to know these things? Evidently, they don't. 
And that is the problem with the Cleveland Browns. You got a second-year quarterback and a rookie coach who had no business being there. And, oh, by the way, the only reason he was there is because the rookie quarterback wanted him in Baker Mayfield last year. And John Dorsey, who, who's otherwise, in terms of accumulated talent, has been impressive. But, my God, you're going to defer to Baker Mayfield. Yeah, Greg, Williams, good pretty good too. Greg Williams still should have still been a damn head coach. That's the problem with the Cleveland Browns. Go ahead. Stephen A. is right about this football team. And I was the one leading the charge about the Browns in the offseason. Uh, it's a big problem if you can't admit when you were wrong. I was wrong about the Cleveland Browns. I was wrong about Baker Mayfield and Freddie Kitchens. That's just the reality. Because I'm off the bandwagon, and this is why. We go back – I go back to week one when we sat in here. We talked about the performance against the Tennessee Titans. We talked about two things that were the major theme of that football game. Penalties and turnovers. Mm-hmm. Well, I sit here in week eight, and I'm talking about the same thing. Penalties and turnovers. So until you prove to me that you can fix those things, that you get those things rectified, I can't stay on your bandwagon anymore. I can't tout you and your talent anymore. I look at yesterday's game. You averaged more yards per play than the Patriots did. Yet you beat yourselves, and that's been the storyline every week for the Cleveland Browns. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.